A groundbreaking new documentary series explores the human impact of climate change. Some Showtime's years of living dangerously sends Hollywood stars and leading journalists around the world. In Sunday's premiere, Pulitzer Prize winning Tom Friedman travels to Syria. He reports on how climate change adds stress to a volatile political situation. When they write the history of the, this revolution, how important will the drought be? Bani Adam, مثل الحرب, يتأقلم مع كل الأجواء. أنت لما الأرض قاحلة حكم الله ما تقدر ت. بس لما نشوف إنه أنت محكوم من الرب هالحكم والأب منطيق ظهره بدك تصيح تقول جوعان فلما نسمع إنه ما حد استجاب بدك تزعل فاحنا صار معانا الأمور هاي كلها فقمنا على الثورة. Thomas Friedman of the New York Times joins us from Washington, and Leslie Stahl of 60 Minutes is here. She reports from Greenland on an upcoming episode. Good morning. Morning. Let me go to Washington first. Morning. Tom, uh, good morning, Tom. Tell me the, the, the connection between drought and the war in Syria. Well, you know, Charlie, uh, we've seen droughts, you know, in the Middle East um, uh, since the Bible. Uh, so, you know, droughts happen. The question is, uh, is the Mediterranean region warming and, and uh, making the droughts more frequent and more intense? And um, there are a lot of scientists who believe they do. Uh, that, that's what's happening. In 2000, beginning in 2006 and lasting till 2010, Syria experienced the worst drought in its modern history. Mm -hmm. About a million Syrian farmers and herders left the land and basically flocked into the major cities, Hama, Homs, Damascus, where they really overwhelmed the, uh, the infrastructure. People were living five, eight, ten to a room. And, and, the, and the simple story is that As the Assad government did basically nothing for them, nothing to help them, as that farmer in northern Syria was telling us. The drought didn't cause the revolution, but when the revolution came, all these farmers and herders could not wait to join. Tom, you know this area very well. You've been covering it for many years. What did you learn that surprised you most working on this documentary? Well, you know, what was, that's a good question, Gail, because one of the fun things for me was I've been traveling through the Middle East nearly my whole adult life. And one thing I've never done is, because uh, I also did the Yemen running out of water and Egypt, the bread crisis, uh, which will appear in later, later segments of the series. Um, I actually spent, uh, you know, all these weeks traveling through the Middle East only talking to Arab environmentalists. And um, they're a remarkable community, um, small but extremely able. And uh, it gave me a whole new perspective on the region, you know, because one thing young Arabs will tell you is, hey, we've tried everything. We tried nationalism, socialism, communism, Islamism, capitalism, liberalism, <laughs> and th nothing worked. And I always tell them there's actually one ism you haven't tried, and that's environmentalism. And that's actually not a joke, because environmentalists start with the commons. They, they understand that there's no Shiite air or Sunni air. If we don't protect the commons, nobody's going to breathe. Leslie, you toured the glaciers in Greenland. Let's take a quick look at an upcoming episode. Good. Something big going on on the other side. And then Marco tells me why these ice quakes scare him so much. Greenland is melting at a pace that is hard to fathom, five times faster than it was just 20 years ago. Leslie, this is so fascinating because no place on Earth has seen the effects of global warming as the Arctic has, right? You see it. Uh, I was out on the glacier, which was once, maybe just a couple of years ago, just a white sheet. And you fly over it, and it's dotted with these lakes. So not only are the glaciers falling into the ocean, but they're, they're melting from the top. And it looks like a white blouse with blue polka dots. That's and what's many... the consequences for the rest of the world? Well, here's the consequence. As all that ice gets into the ocean, the sea level rises. And we're seeing it already. All these floods we've heard about, mm -hmm. uh, much more disastrous than they have been the, in our lifetime. That's because the, the ice is melting. It's affecting the seawater all along the eastern shore of the United States. Yeah, so we're feeling the impact here. You see it when you're there, and you feel it when you come home. How do you, how do you guys think, Tom, back to you in Washington, how do you think that the climate change skeptics will react to what they're going to see on this series? It's fascinating and so well done. 
Well, you know, I, I can't predict. Um, you can't talk someone out of something they haven't been actually talked into. You know, mm -hmm. so much of this is, as I think, emotional reaction. But I think the power of this series is that it tells the story through the experiences of real people, um, you know, living in real communities. Al Gore did an amazing job with an inconvenient truth, but that was one man telling millions. What this series is about is actually millions telling many more millions about how climate change is impacting and their real lives. Leslie, there's been a lot of talk that the media has not focused on climate change. Right. Well, this is a series that focuses on it. But to your question, mm -hmm. Don Cheadle, the actor, mm -hmm. has what I think is, is one of the most powerful pieces because he goes down into the South. And he, he is remarkable as, as no, no opinion. He just is on the, a quest to find out why so many people in the South don't believe climate change. And he finds this Christian scientist who goes into churches um, to persuade them that science and religion can live together. And it's really uh, an emotional, wonderful part of this series. It was fascinating because you could see John Cheadle's trying to learn, too, what's this all about. Exactly. It's amazing. Great work. Great work. Thomas Friedman, good to see you. Can I just say you were so great at the conference when you were interviewing Hillary Clinton and Christine Lagarde. You were so, it was such a great session. <laughs> Has nothing Appreciate to do with what you're here to promote, but boy, that was great. Thank you both. Thank you.